Hello everyone and welcome to testing CSD100 in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. I have previously made a model of CST100 as a mod. It is part of my Real Space Craft Pack and I've also made the uh, Atlas V that's part of my Real Rockets Pack. I didn't actually make the boosters for Atlas V. Those I rely on the ATK Propulsion Pack for, so that's another mod. Uh, so I need to test it out ahead of CST100 actually launching with crew finally. Just in case somebody wants to use it to simulate uh, the mission. It doesn't look like I have the craft file here, which is fine. I should probably just show you how to put it together if I remember properly. It's been a while since I've used it. Haven't had the occasion. So here we go. Uh, here's the pod. Maybe there are other better CST100s out there, but uh, I, I did my best. And so heat shield. There's the service module, which might be troublesome. We'll see. Uh, we should definitely put parachutes before we put anything else. There's the aero cap, and then there's the cap, and then the abort engines. So let's put the abort engines. Okay, and then. Okay, and so we'll just put two. I forget how many there are. But, and then I'm just going to set it to eight tons. Okay, many things can go wrong with this. Get how the cap works. We should probably put a docking port in just to see how that interacts with stuff. Should be a NASA docking port. See, the NASA docking port's pretty darn big, though. We'll tuck it in a little bit. Seems like a good idea. Um, let's see, it starts sitting on top of that. I guess we'll just tweak it down. Okay. Uh, this is just decoupling off. I guess if they have it do something fancier. Now this might be a little bit tricky. I don't think I have the little fairing they, they have at the bottom. I think maybe the best way to do that is with procedural fairings. Well, it's gonna be bigger than those nozzles, I think. I mean, further out than those nozzles. Maybe I've got those nozzles a little bit too far out though. So now we can have a centaur. It looks weird, <laughs> admittedly. Got to tuck that in. I don't. I don't know if they'll have these tags, but that's what we've got right now. As far as the engine is concerned. Um, this doesn't actually have the mounts for the two en dual engine centaur. So we're just going to have to make do. Suddenly a dual engine centaur. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so the Atlas V 400 series interstage adapter. Um, probably needs to be rotated. So now we need two boosters. Oh, and this this has the rounded top. Okay, so the, uh, there's the model for the AJ60A. This is the KW rocketry one, I think. So that was the construction section, and now we have the testing portion. And here we are at Launch Complex 41 with the Atlas V and CST100. Though it doesn't exactly look like uh, Launch Complex 41 apparently, and. So Pekka su suggested that he might try to fix things up, but that's how it looks with Cape Canaveral launch sites right now. And the launch went pretty well. Again, these boosters are from KW Rocketry, so keep that in mind. Uh, I just used the regular decouplers and they went off okay. The plume on the RD-180 looked a little bit weird, so I fixed that. And so the latest release of the real rockets pack will have a fix for that plume. That's all that changed. And so, yeah, that's been touched up. And here we go with the Centaur. Uh, I did not add two attachment nodes for the dual engine Centaur. You'll just have to, uh, to the, you know, just the surface attach those. There is, there are other 
RL10 models you can use. Just make sure that the fuel mixture in the Centaur is correct for whatever model that you happen to use, just in case they had slightly different numbers. And here we are getting close to orbit. Now, the Centaur technically does not go into a full orbit. It stays suborbital. But I let the script do whatever it could with it, and so we ended up like that. And it used the abort motors on CST-100 in order to finish orbit, and that ended up making us lopsided. Uh, the abort motors at least worked. They, we tested that they worked, and the plume looked fine or good enough, so I let that be. And then I used the RCS to circularize our orbit and then uh, bring us all the way down to a re-entry trajectory. And so that's where we're at right now. I knocked off the little nose cone. That worked. And then, of course, the service module. The service module separated. The little umbilical clamp doesn't animate or anything. It's just there. And the service module does have a controller in it, so you can push it away like that. And here we went, but we had an overheating problem with the heat shield. So, yes, uh, it's not ablating very much, but it decided to overheat. And so I had to do some configuration tweaks. Uh, it's weird that it would explode before the capsule would, but uh, Realism Overhaul did some strange things to the heat shields. I don't know exactly how to describe it. Um, I copied their numbers. They have these preset tags for the heat shields. I tried to use the tag, that did not work out. So I just copied the numbers and uh, yeah. So after copying the numbers, I went in and tested it. This time I did not bother with the whole launch. We just cheated it into orbit quickly and checked out that it worked. So the fixes that were done, the heat shield, that'll be to the real spacecraft pack. And I also added the scent mode for CST-100. We won't be using the scent mode here. I didn't have the descent mode added in, uh, but for the new release of the real spacecraft pack, I do have the descent mode added in as I use the abort engines for the re-entry burn there, just to speed things up a bit. And yeah, the Real Rockets pack has the adjusted RD-180 plume. I'll put the link to the Real Rockets pack and the Real Spacecraft pack in the video description. So those are the packs that have ILS-5 and the CST-100 and a whole bunch of other things, of course. Uh, you can trim out most of the other things. Be careful on the systems that might have shared stuff with Atlas V, like Vulcan. Uh, so, mainly Vulcan. Anyway, so this time the heat shield worked. We see charred of later. I actually set to an early lunar heat shield, uh, just to give it some margin because, well, we just blew up, so I thought I might as well. But probably the Gemini heat shield would have done fine. I was a little bit worried about it because I didn't test it with the descent mode, the adjustable COM, and if you do use descent mode, I wanted to give you some margin just in case for when the craft tilts away from retrograde. So. Anyway, off goes that cap, and I arm the parachutes there. The cap can sometimes sort of get iffy and take a while to fly off, but Hopefully it'll be reasonably consistent. It depends on how you place the docking port sometimes though. And here we go, splashing down underneath the shadow of a cloud. And buoyancy is not under my control, I don't think so. Anyway, it survived and so it's ready to go. I'll put the links in the video description. It is tested and you can use it for your simulation purposes as we near the first crewed flight of CST-100. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.